it's very nice to meet you. Can you tell me a bit more about what you do and why exactly you are here at Campus Party? My name is Eric and I'm from Japan and I'm here talking about augmented reality and education. And I got to know about Campus Party Singapore through some TEDx people in Japan. There's a lot of TEDx people here. And I was interested in it because it looked like half festival, half conference, half and this is kind of the thing that a lot of TEDx people are interested in, right? We want, we're interested in collaborating, not just presenting to each other. And when I came, I just presented just now, and I, I can show you these things. <laughs> these are playing cards, and you can, with this project, I'm giving students the opportunity to connect digital contents to anything in the real world, and using augmented reality and gamified experiences like a Pokemon Go, uh, students are creating gamified tours, museum exhibits, um, kind of um, experiential open campuses, and a lot of different other content. So I was here showing off some of the things that my students are doing with this project. What do you hope is the next big thing that AR or VR can bring to the table? Um, well, I came here mostly to talk about some cautionary tales about AR and VR, because on the commercial side, of course, there's a lot of big talk about how this is going to be a, it's already billions and billions of dollars invested in it because there's a lot of money for marketing and there's a big space in education and, um, and other markets. But um, I came to talk mostly about uh, some of the possible dangers and bad effects that will might, might come about using AR. And one of them is, is we're already seeing some psychological things happening in the mobile world, right? Some of us are feeling more divided and alone even though we're connected with our devices with everyone. And we're also customizing content more with our phones. Everyone's clicking e likes on Facebook and getting algorithms to curate information for them. So people don't have le as much of a common base of information. And this is going to be exacerbated with augmented reality because uh, it takes in even more data about where you are, what you're looking at, who you're with, even things like if you take into the fitness stuff that's also considered AR, your heart rate and some of your, your uh, health functions as well. And when that stuff gets curated and added to these algorithms like we're seeing already with the tech lash and Facebook, there can be some discriminatory and in the educational world we're seeing possibly uh, an increase in what's called the digital divide where students have different levels of access to learning content and because with AR and VR information can now be locked into physical items or physical places so you have to actually travel. In, in a way it can be a very good thing but I wanted to talk about some of these things to help us, you know, especially people in the commercial field, uh, think about these things as we design the new products. What are some things that young people can do to involve themselves in a the developmental like, area of like, AR? Well, um, this is something that I do with my students all the time and I have to start off very simple with my students. So what we do with a lot of students to begin with is something called Google Cardboard. And it's just a piece of cardboard. It's $5 Singapore, maybe $750 US dollars. Um, and you stick your phone in it and you can load in 3D con uh, 360 content and kind of travel. There's something called Google Expeditions where if you're a teacher and you want to have your students experience something, you can buy a set of 10, 20 of them and put devices in them and take your students on a trip to Egypt or into a cell of a body and things like that. So that's, that's very easy and accessible. But uh, getting up into the AR stuff, we're running into some, especially in the classroom, using AR because it takes in so much data, it's starting to become an issue with administrators in schools so if you are a teacher and looking to do this in classrooms I would recommend looking into what kind of data is collected because you might be violating some some laws because they're just starting to make these new laws and you might be getting into a little bit of trouble